Who are the chained giants of the North? What is the story of the Great John? And where does their allegiance truly lie? This is the history of House Umber. Like and subscribe to Fantasy Haven for more animated content like this, and let me know in the comments what fate awaits House Umber in the Winds of Winter. The Umbers hold Last Hearth, the largest northern castle sworn to House Dark. It lies south of the Gift, east of the King's Road, west of the Bay of Seals, and north of the Last River. Their sigil is a brown-haired giant with broken silver chains roaring furiously on a flame-red field. Thousands of years ago, the Umbers were one of many ancient First Man houses ruling their wintry fiefdoms as petty kings, until they were subjugated by the Kings of Winter who bore the name Stark, and reduced to vassals. They have been loyal ever since. Most of ancient Umber history is lost to time. Some speculate that the legendary Knight's King, the tyrannical Lord Commander who enslaved the Night's Watch, may have been an Umber, but then again he may have been a Bolton, or a Flint, or even a Stark, for all anyone knows. What we do know is that the northerly Umberlands have been at risk of wildling attacks, and its lords have developed a fierce hatred towards the tribes beyond the Wall. 3,000 years ago, two wildling kings beyond the Wall launched an invasion of the north through caves beneath the Wall. They were the brothers Gendal and Gorn. The wildling army were met on the other side by the king in the north, and his Umber vassals, who joined the fray. Aegon's conquest saw Lord Torrhen Stark accept the title Lord Paramount, and the Umbers became powerful Lords Bannermen. The Umbers once again marched with the Starks against a wildling invasion. In 226 AC, a new king beyond the wall united the wildling clans, Raymond Redbeard, who saw the degraded state of the Night's Watch and seized the moment. Lord Commander Jack Mosgood was caught off guard by the invasion, and was forever known as Sleepy Jack. On the shores of Long Lake, King Raymond's wildlings were caught between Lord Willem Stark and Lord Harmond Umber, known to history as the Drunken Giant. Willem was slain, and his brother Artos took revenge, and the wildlings fled. Some time later, Last Hearth was inherited by Lord Horfrost Umber. He had three sons that we know of, an unnamed heir, Mors, and Hotha. Mors was a fearsome fighter, and a drunkard. One night he passed out by the side of a road, probably drunk, and a crow mistook him for a corpse. It pecked out his eye, and the enraged Moors grabbed it and tore off its head with his bare teeth. Since then, he has been known as Crow Food. He replaced his lost eye with a chunk of dragon glass, which he also covers up with a white leather eye patch. Moors has led a sad existence. His wife died in childbirth. In 270, his only daughter was kidnapped by wildlings, leaving him with a burning hatred for the savages beyond the wall. And in 283, his sons marched down south at the call of Lord Eddard Stark, where they died during the Battle of the Trident. Let's go back again to the year 250. Horfrost Umber believed his third son Hotha had the makings of a maester. While studying in Old Town, a whore tried to steal from Hotha, so he disemboweled them. This is a tale told only in whispers, for the prostitute was a man. Regardless, this earned Hotha the nickname Horsbane. Eventually, he abandoned his studies and returned to the last hearth. These two brothers would eventually grow into, as Catelyn Stark put it, hoary old brigands. The unnamed heir of Horfrost Umber had multiple sons of his own, the eldest of whom succeeded him as Lord, John Umber, known as the Great John for his immense height. The Great John is a fierce warrior, a mighty drinker, and a surprisingly decent singer, apparently. As with all the Lord's Bannermen, he answers Robb Stark's call to Winterfell following the imprisonment of Lord Eddard. Hungry for the fight, the Great John demands to lead the vanguard of the Northern Host, mocking Robb for his youth and threatening to march home if refused. After daring to touch his greatsword, the cocky Lord loses his fingers to Grey Wind and sees this as a sign of Robb's strength, so respects his wishes. When the Northern Host marches southwards and makes camp at Moat Kaelin, the Umbers station themselves at the Children's Tower. Robb Stark gives command of his infantry to Lord Bolton instead of the Grey John, preferring Roos's more cautious approach. When the Northern Host splits at the Twins, so too do the Great John and his heir, the Small John. The Great John fights at the Battle of the Camps, setting fire to Lannister siege towers outside of Riverrun, while the Small John joins Robb's personal battle guard, and fights with him at the Battle of the Whispering Wood. After the death of Eddard Stark, a war council is held in the Great Hall of Riverrun. The Great John insults Stevron Frey for his cautious advice, and rejects Catelyn Stark's calls for peace, instead proclaiming Robb Stark as King in the North, setting the future of the War of the Five Kings in motion. Meanwhile, the elderly Crowfood and Horsbane remain at Last Hearth as its joint Castellans, although they do attend the Harvest Feast at Winterfell hosted by Bran Stark. 
Along with others such as Lord Wyman Manderley, Moore's wishes to marry Donella Hornwood, the recently widowed Lady of the Hornwood Lands. Hotha, meanwhile, complains that his nephew took so many men down south that they don't have enough for the harvest, and also asks for ships to defend Last Hearth from wildling raiders, slipping past Eastwatch by the sea. The brothers bristle when ordered to work with Wyman Manderley in building ships, with Moore's calling him a waddling sack of suet, but they behave nonetheless. Down south, the Great John fights in the Battle of Oxcross and goes on to raid the Westerlands, seizing gold mines at Castamere, Nuns Deep, and Pendrick Hills. The loyal Small John stays with Rob Stark. He and Black Walder Frey scale the walls of the Crag, the seat of House Westerling, and help to capture it. The taking of the Crag, of course, eventually leads to Rob's downfall, and he breaks his pact with the Freys to marry Jane Westerling. Sir Ryman Frey furiously marches his army back to the Twins, and the equally furious Great John suggests attacking them, but Rob refuses. Lord Umber then takes a more diplomatic approach, proposing marriage alliances between his widowed uncles and the Freys. King Rob secures a different pact, a marriage between Edmure Tully and Rosalind Frey. With the Frey's support, he plans to retake Moat Kaelin from the Ironborn to reclaim the North. The Great John would finally be given command of the Vanguard, in order to create a diversionary attack from the South. This plan never comes to pass. The Umbers attend the wedding at the Twins. While the Small John stays sober, his father gets drunk, sings loudly, and carries poor Rosalind to the bedchamber during the bedding ceremony. Lame Lothar Frey, the architect of the Red Wedding, assigned three men with getting the Great John drunk. Peter Pimple, Merritt, and Sir Waylon Frey. All fail in this task. When the Red Wedding begins, it takes eight men to subdue the Great John, but not before he kills one and wounds two with a stolen sword. The Small John throws a table over Rob to protect him. He himself is sent to his knees by a bolt and beheaded by a man in shaggy furs, a Bolton or a Karstark. The Great John is subdued and held captive at the Twins. After Roos Bolton becomes Warden of the North, Hors Bane begrudgingly swears allegiance to the flayed men, fearing for the life of his nephew in Frey captivity. He feasts at the Dread Fort with Ramsay Bolton and Arnulf Karstark, and later marches his men south to join the Siege of Moat Kaelin. After this, Hotha travels to Winterfell to attend the wedding between Ramsay and Jane Poole disguised as Arya Stark. Though he despises the phrase for killing his kin, there is little he can do. His brother Crowfood, however, is one of the few Northerners swearing fealty to King Stannis Baratheon, on three conditions. One, that Stannis sends him the Skull of Manta for use as a cup. Two, that Stannis pardons Hotha after crushing the Boltons. And three, that Umber will not be made to fight Umber in battle. Stannis agrees to these demands. The House of Umber is split. Most of their army perish down south. Crowfood commands green boys, while Horsebane oversees grizzled greybeards. Moors camps outside Winterfell during the blizzard, having his men dig pit traps and blow horns to cause confusion. He draws out Bolton and Frey troops, some of whom fall into the traps, including Sir Aenys Frey, who breaks his neck. Moors also uses the opportunity to capture the fleeing Theon Greyjoy and Jane Poole, sending them both to the Crofters' village where Stannis is encamped. So what does the future hold? If Horsebane does not betray the Boltons, he may be executed by Stannis when he takes Winterfell. Crowfood may be a dead man walking. This fragment of an Asher chapter for The Winds of Winter appears to detail the Crowfood's head atop a weirwood spike, carried by Frey soldiers. The Great John himself may be imprisoned in the Twins, but Sir Jaime Lannister demands that Walder Frey's hostages be transferred to the Crown. The Riverlands is a dangerous place, and what would happen if the Brotherhood Without Banners evoked the Umber Sigil and freed the Giant from his chains? As for the rest of this family living at Last Hearth, when the Long Night comes and the others begin their march, we may see the fall of the House of Umber. To learn about another Northern House, check out the history of House Bolton, or if you want something different, the Blackfire Rebellions. Like, subscribe, and check out the Patreon for more content like this. Special thanks to my patrons, Andre, Coleshot, Devcole, and Caden. Let me know in the comments, what awaits House Umber in Winds?